What's good, YouTube? It's me, Core 67 Sports TV. Shout out to the awesome and amazing LDBC, Lions Den Boston community. Shout out to the greatest universe in the world, the Southern University, home of the Mighty Jaguars. In this particular video, we're going to talk about what's next for Southern University. Before we get into that, hopefully everyone has had a happy and joyous uh, holiday season. And hopefully you can get to 2024 off on the right note. Uh, on this New Year's Eve, but uh, back to a regular schedule programming in Central Southern University, uh, we know that Southern University has made Terrence Graves its 21st head coach. So in terms of what's next with Southern University, uh, as members of Jaguar Nation, I think we need uh, to kind of start off everything on a fresh note with a clean slate uh, and give Coach Graves, you know, every opportunity to be successful at Southern University. I think that's first and foremost. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I think uh, as members of Jaguar Nation, we shouldn't have like ridiculously, like unrealistic expectations. Uh, in this first year, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't expect uh, Coach Graves to go undefeated and win the SWAT championship and then turn around and win the Celebration Bowl. Uh, ideally, you know, it'll be great if that could be the case, but I think we need to be realistic, be optimistic, but not but not be unrealistic at the same token. Uh, now, in terms of uh, player sign, uh, recently uh, the first wave and the first phase of National Signing Day has passed. Uh, and for the most part, Southern University really didn't make a whole lot of moves. However, they did sign uh, John Curtis, uh, three-star John Curtis running back, uh, Jason Gabriel Jr., uh, essentially, he's a prototypical Southern University running back uh, like uh, uh, Lindsey Scott Sr., uh, Kendrick Grimes, Carl Igon, Steve Warford, um, you know, Ryan Lewis. All of those small, shifty, like third-down type running back Southern University has had over the years, you know, like Lenore Artillery, he kind of fits into that same mold, the same prototype. Basically, he's your prototypical Southern University running back, uh, and he fits into that prototype. That was really like the only real major sign that Southern University had. Uh, now, you know, we're going to have some other news in terms of Southern University, in terms of players that they offered, so on and so forth. Uh, I think the big thing that, uh, the important thing for Southern University is the fact that uh, Kelby Givens has uh, exited the transfer portal and he's come back to Southern University. So I think it's big. I mean, Southern University already has enough holes on their defense to fill. Uh, you already have to replace Taj Brown, and you have to replace Jalen Campbell, John Carter, Christian Davis. Like, those are all big boys that you have to fill. So bringing back Kelby Gibbons is one less void that you have to fill. So I think uh, getting Jason Gabriel Jr., and I think getting Kelby Gibbons back, I think those are some big things. You know, in terms of, like, other news around the SWAC, Texas Southern still has not made a decision on who's going to be their next head coach. Uh, Alcorn State legend and recent head coach, uh, Fred McNair, he was the front runner to get the head coaching job. Uh, the Board of Regents, they just uh, met recently, and most of the board wanted Fred McNair. However, uh, two members didn't approve it. Uh, they want... Uh, former uh, University of Miami and Houston Texans wide receiver Andre Johnson uh, to be the next head coach of Texas Southern. Uh, you know, I think, you know, Coach Prime being a head coach of Jackson State, I think it brought a lot of good attention uh, uh, to SWAC. However, I think, you know, some former NFL players, they just kind of, you know, especially since Tennessee State High, Eddie George, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing if they start out maybe as a coordinator, but you know, just to be a head coach right out the outset. I don't know. I think that might be a bad precedent because at least Coach Prime, he has some head coaching experience on a high school level. However, if you look at Andre Johnson, he has no coaching experience. You know, I think many individuals feel like if you're a Hall of Fame caliber NFL player, you know, that trumps being a coach and having coaching experience and moving way up the ladder. Uh, however, Fred McNair is a proven swag coach. And I think in the ideal situation, uh, for Texas Southern. Maybe you hire Fred McNair as your head coach. 
Maybe Andre Johnson is your offensive coordinator and Ed Reed is your defensive coordinator. But, I mean, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, you know, it seems as if they're leaning towards Fred McNair. However, I guess in terms of the border regents vote, I guess it needs to be a unanimous vote. And it seems as if they really haven't been able to come to a consensus. So we'll see. In addition to that, uh, it seems as if Willie Simmons may potentially leave uh, FAMU uh, to go be a running backs coach at the University of Duke at Duke University. Uh, but the thing about it is uh, uh, FAMU, uh, you know, the, the AD and the athletics department, they've raised money to kind of keep Coach Willie Simmons there you know, based on all the success they had this season, uh, they won the SWAT championship. In addition to that, they won the SWAT, uh, Celebration Bowl. Uh, they're the Black National Champions. Uh, they have a, a phenomenal recruiting class on paper. Now, we don't know if that going to translate over onto the field, but they had an excellent uh, recruiting class. A lot of three- and four-star recruits from, you know, bigger universities uh, in the state of Florida, you know, like Florida State, and FAU and FIU and those other universities. So they got a lot of transfers from the transfer portal. So I think it's imperative for them that they they could keep Coach Simmons because if he leaves, more than likely, all of those recruits leave also. In addition to that, uh, it seems as if Bethune Cookman, they had an excellent uh, recruiting class also. They had, uh, they've got a lot of players that transferred from, you know, from – other universities, bigger universities, FBS universities, and Florida also. So they had a good recruiting class. Seems as if, uh, in terms of FAMU, most of the three and four star recruits are on the offensive end in terms of skill players. Whereas it seems like with Bethune Cookman, most of theirs are on the defensive side. But either way, it seems as if there's a lot of NIL money in the state of Florida uh, because both of those schools has had excellent recruiting classes. Uh, from a Southern University perspective, <clears throat> I think it's going to be imperative that Southern University does a, a excellent job in terms of recruiting because, uh, you know, fam, you did an excellent job. Bethune did an excellent job. Jackson State had a good recruiting class. Uh, seems as if uh, <clears throat> Mississippi Valley, since they got Southern University starting quarterback, Harold Blood, the transfer there, seems like they're putting together a decent recruiting class. Alabama and them, Grambling. So it's going to be imperative that, you know, Southern kind of steps it up. I think more than anything, uh, I think they need to improve the offensive line play. And in addition to that, they need to fill all the holes that uh, they're going to have on the defensive side of the ball. So from a Southern University perspective, uh, it seems as if it's an arms race in terms of getting these three- and four-star recruits from these major FBS universities, these PWIs. Uh, these Power Five schools. So, uh, Coach Graves is going to have to get on it. Uh, you know, Southern University, we got to have a, a excellent recruiting class so we could be <clears throat> competitive in the SWAC and, you know, have a good solid season and get his first, you know, season at Southern University off on the right foot. You know, hopefully we could get that. Uh, but that's it for this video. If you have not done so, uh, go check out yesterday's uh, edition of Bayou Sports Talk with myself, my uh, my family members, Kate and Raymond. Uh, we had a good conversation about uh, HBCU news in general, and we talked about the Saints, the Pelicans, so on and so forth. Uh, in addition to that, if you did, have not done so already, check out last night's edition, uh, the Southern Baller Show with myself and my brother, Jared O'Levin Green, on his channel. Also, check out the brother Brent Fox on his channel. Uh, if you have not done so already, uh, if you find any value in this video, like the video, share the video, comment in the comment section, subscribe to the channel. Also, click the notification bell so you can be alerted anytime, you po anytime I post any new videos. Uh, hopefully, y'all have a happy new year. I'll catch y'all in 2024. Catch y'all on the rebound. Have a blessed, phenomenal holiday weekend. Peace and blessings.